Hey everybody, so I'm going to pick back up where I left off with Landon. Um, so let's go ahead and check this out here. Oh, other screen. So yeah, you got some really good stuff going on here. Um, obviously kind of breaking a, a few um, a few issues here um, with um, the floating stuff. Um, and although I, I get what you're going for there, um, just putting them on another box, like that is kind of part of staging, right? Because if you look at what your hand does as it goes and reaches for it, it's probably going to go through whatever it's sitting on, right? So you have to uh, you have to take some of that stuff into consideration. Um, I really like a couple of things you do here. I like this leg out right here. It does like this stretch. Um, and I like the way it kind of comes back as he's standing back up. It's almost like he's, so that's really, you're really getting a good idea about how the balance works there. Um, so that works great. Um, I feel like the way he takes the lid off, like first it goes to the box there, so you need to work on that. And then I feel like you're, you're kind of just sort of flicking it off. And I think, um... I that I wish you could just use a little bit more, um, like, um, that feels like a, a technical issue, not a personal acting, um, decision, right? It feels like the character flips the box off because, or flips the top off because, um, because it's hard to constrain that stuff and do that smoothly, right? So you even get a little bit of a pop there. Um, and that's why it's feeling like a, like he's flicking it off. So I think like working on the constraints and the, the IK switch there is, is going to be important to allowing it to feel like he sort of lifts it off a little slowly, right? And sort of build that anticipation. It doesn't need to be too slow, but it needs to be just a little bit more, you know, gradual. Um, so this part here, I like this anticipation down and then your, your, pop back to there right I think I would consider dragging parts of this so let me show you what I'm talking about I'll go ahead and drag this into Photoshop so um, on that frame where that happens it's right about right here so you get this and then this is sort of the the dragging away, right? And so, you know, we got these these masses here. And so if I go back one more frame, right? It's this mass, this mass, and then your head mass, right? And then I go forward a frame. And what I think you want it to feel like is that this center mass is sort of what's pulling the most. So like his chest is pulling. And then you can drag the head back just a little bit, right? And then on the next frame here, I think that I think your chest and your your hips are in the right spot. But I would still consider dragging the head just a little bit. That way, you still have somewhere to go to there, right? So I think that would that would be a really subtle way of kind of getting that. And then as he's kind of coming down this way, I, like his line of action is is very straight. And so I'd like it if you get a little bit. Of that going on in the line of action and so to get that really it's just sort of rotating these two pieces you know kind of rotating this one down this way rotate this one up this way and that's going to get that curve in the back a little bit more right um and then like the stretch makes sense right here i like what you got going on there um and then that looks good, like the impact and then the squish from that on the chest looks good. Um, my only problem with this little scoop back here is that I think the butt needs a little bit of a, a hop on it. Like every every time he pushes with that foot, it's going to push his butt up a little bit too. Just a little bit, not a lot. Um, otherwise, I think this is looking really pretty good. Yeah. Nice work, man. Um, no, don't want to save over that. Okay, Megan. 
Okay. I had a meeting so, with Ron Swanson yesterday, but I had a little card. Um, I can give you feedback Sorry, on this. Right um, what I'm actually oh, going to do, uh, because just yesterday we gave you in-person feedback on these first three shots. Um, the thing I was noticing on that... Actually, wait. Let's just do that. Um we're in PR3, but you, you turn in some stuff on PR4, so let's just go ahead and look at that now. Um, I had a meeting with Ron Swanson yesterday, but I had a little car trouble. So, Sorry. I know primarily what you're looking at are these first three, these first three shots, right? So let's kind of look at those. I, I think the walk-in's looking good. Um, I, I think right here... You could play just a little bit more with uh, the line of action. Let's drag this into Photoshop. So we get to close to so right. If you look at the hip angle, <laughs> um, the hip is up like that, and then this one is like this, and so that's going to make his spine kind of do this. Um, and right now it feels a little straight. Hey Megan, you want to hear something crazy? I am currently recording you a feedback video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually recording it for the whole class, but this is this one's your section of it, so that's fun. Um, I pulled the stuff you uploaded earlier. Um, to uh, to that so uh, or, or the year I uploaded yesterday so just kind of okay. drawing over some stuff for you. So. Um, do you know where Marty Fitzgerald is by chance? I, I don't right now. He usually um he may have a class. I don't know. I, I, check check the schedule outside of Redina's office. There's a, a schedule of where everybody is. I think okay. he has a class in the mornings. Okay. I don't know if he's actually at that or if there's if he's um in a meeting or something like that but okay. so, cool thank you okay so yeah right here you're getting and so like i, I think that looks interesting like you're getting that, that countering hip but on the other side you, you're kind of doing something different you're doing this line of action all the way through and then sort of this hip angle, right? So I think pick one or the other and kind of kind of keep some consistency in the spine, particularly, like I notice it the most right through there. Like to me, I think I would go with the other way. Um, he's raising that shoulder up though, so that makes it a little harder. Um, but still what you would do is like, even if he's got that shoulder up, maybe you don't raise it up quite as much and, and curve it that way. That doesn't make sense in that color. Let me draw for you better. Like that way, that way. And then still kind of keep it going this way. And then his arm gesture is still kind of flowing out of that. This one could kind of counter it by coming out that way. Um, so I, I say all that um, as like some small notes. Really my, my biggest uh, note on this is that I feel like this arm gesture is kind of mainly happening in the... It doesn't have enough drag in the in the hand part of it, hand and the forearm, right? So as he come, raises it up right through here, like the the wrist is sort of feeling like it stays a little locked. Um, the elbow is bending, but like I think you just need like a more interesting shape as he brings it up, right? So instead of just rotating at the shoulder there, maybe what he would do is bring his elbow up first and then drag the thumb this way, right? And then in these next few frames here, you can reverse that to here where the, the thumb is pointing this way, right? And so you're gonna get that sort of that whipping of the arm up. And I think any rotation you can do at the wrist point um, to build in more of that overlapping action, like right here, if uh, you can drag that wrist downward or, or whatever um, just to kind of loosen that up a little bit um, it just feels a little stiff to me as he's raising his hand up and then as he kind of comes back here too I just feel like a lot of that's happening in the shoulder um, and so anything you can do to that I think would really make this a, a nice piece sort of the same with this gesture here like you're starting that like he's like right here, he's kind of leading with the elbow. Just sort of exaggerate that a little bit more. Maybe get that elbow out there. 
and get his hand in here like like this, right? Um, and that way he can kind of flip it out, right? Um, it's really just about getting that lead and follow in the arm. And he, and frankly, his hands are so big. Um, like if it's not there, it feels really noticeable. And then like as it comes back here, you know, just dragging, maybe drag that finger out just a little bit more, start to curl in some of these others, right? Um, and maybe even dragging like this wrist joint back this way a little bit. Um, so the, the hand is actually more like out like this, right? Kind of sort of dragging in loosely. So um, she kind of feels like she needs a little bit more elbow bend here too, just a little bit. And um, any opportunity you get to offset anything with her, like it feels like she kind of hits that keyframe right there all together. And so like maybe dragging her head back so it feels like it's she's still looking up at him as she's bringing up the clipboard and then looks down. Um, that's the hard thing about having two characters in the shot is it's very easy to accidentally kind of overlook one or not put as much work into one. And so even though she's not the focus of this shot, I would still put just a little bit more overlapping action in, in parts of her um, motion. So I think this good I agree like this motion here feels a little sharp just a little bit um, and I would just start it a little earlier so you could ease into it um, so and I know like we've talked about this anything you can do at all to, to just I know she's she's playing um, like grown up and so you'd think she's like setting up upright. So even if it's like while she's setting upright, she she can't sort of hold in her energy, and so she kind of rocks her shoulders back and forth a little bit, like she's, you know, um, uh, in the middle of like this this playing idea. But I think really the biggest thing I'm having issues with her on is like how perfectly parallel so much of the stuff is. And so I think any change you can get in that would be helpful. Um, um, and it doesn't have to be throughout the whole thing. She may end up in, the, like, she may start in this straight pose and then end in this straight pose. Let's see, she ends right here, right? But maybe as she's picking up this clipboard, she just gets a little bit of twist in her chest, so she gets, like, this arm a little further forward, and it kind of leans her head maybe a little bit more this way. As she's as she's picking up the like the breakdown as she's picking up the clipboard, just anything to kind of loosen that up. I think later you do some cool stuff with her, like with this. But I definitely think like you know this head leaning inside to side. I think you just need to favor the the shoulders with that. Um, keep in mind like she's going to need a little bit of pivot on the point where she's contacting the chair. Like she's just going to rock a little bit on that, and that's still going to be sort of the root of that motion. Um, that she makes. So I think you have some of that, but just making sure that that's in there from the ground up. Um, this gesture here, I, I, I like where it's going. It's not quite there yet, but I like where you're going with this, like this thing that he does there. Um, so yeah, keep, keep working on that. I like the side angles you're getting. Um, I think the big thing, like this last little section here, still feels sort of straight on. Um, so any opportunity you get to, to get some angles in there, uh, maybe when he comes back to this, like maybe he ends it on that. Uh, maybe he, so, I oh yeah, went too far. So he goes over to here, I like that. Maybe push that just a little bit more. Right? Um, then maybe after he makes that gesture, or right before he makes that gesture, he comes back to center. And so maybe instead of center, maybe you take him over just a little bit to this side, right? And that way he can sort of end it on on center, right? Um, all that like is is looking pretty good. Again, like th this gesture here, like she just needs more shoulder in that, um, and I think that's really going to help a lot of that. Um, the big thing is like look in your graph editor. There always should be. Um, three channels of motion like n nothing really rotates in, in one axis and there are times where it feels like it's not that it's all rotating in one axis but it feels like the pro 
primary parts of that movement um, could be in that one axis, right? So if, if an object, um, let me see if I have, yeah, let me, let me open this file. I'm gonna increment and save what I'm working on. In case you're curious, I'm, I'm just goofing off with a quadruped cat run. Look, he's running on a treadmill. Yay! It's not quite there yet. So file, new scene. Um, let's say we have our character's head, and he has a blocky head, right? Um, just to kind of scale it up, make it look a little bit more head shaped. Right? So this is the the front. This is like where his nose is. Let's go ahead and just give us an indicator of that. Right. Um, Here, so that makes sense. So whenever our, our character like you know goes from let's say head down to head up, right? We got there to here, right? That's just the the one axis of rotation, and that feels very like linear, right? Um, and even if these are your your start and your end pose, the the real problem is right here in the middle, right? Is that that's still not getting any other rotation. So one of the things you can do is just you know add a little twist to it. So if we add just a little bit of twist to that, we get a little bit of a different rotation. Right? Actually, I think you can do that. Yeah. Make sure that keyframe on everything. So if I add just a little bit of twist to this halfway through, and then you kind of does something like that right and so that doesn't feel quite the the same but it's still not quite there right so the other thing you can do is sort of um it, this is a a strange way of thinking about it but this point is on the top of his head right there imagine that like imagine you're trying to balance something there right or at least that we're thinking about that point so we can track it right so what I will often do is think about how that character, is, how that point either leads or follows, right? So the character could drag that point behind, right? You can drag something like this right here in frame eight. And so that's dragging behind and then maybe through here, still dragging behind, but then over through here, kind of overshoots past and settles into this, right? Um, or we could do it the other way around, right? Like we could delete that one, delete that one, and we could have that point lead. Right? So even if the rotation is dragging on the Y, it may be leading on the X, right? And so like it kind of does like that. This may even give us a chance for that tilt to like overshoot in that direction, right? So, I don't know, that's, that was, that didn't quite work. Um, but, but you get the idea of like, you know, we're kind of, kind of just working with like a very subtle difference in how those poses work. Right? Um, and just that little bit of change on all three axes um, will um, will add up over time. Right? So the, the big thing is just like making sure you get a little bit of motion on all of them. And it, especially considering she has such a big head, right? Like it's it's so large that it's um, it, we notice it if it feels like it's just moving straight up and down. Um, and so like that motion right there, straight up and down, maybe just drag her head just a little bit to this side, right? Um, so something like that, just in the breakdown. Um, and overall, for the rest of this, like I like what you have going on here. I think I would push that even more like have him like dip his head forward as he's leaning in like he's like like sort of um you can't see me right now i'm making these head gestures um like he's like leaning forward with like like he's pushing his head forward in the question not dragging it behind right now they all you know i, I know you still haven't gotten to this part yet it's kind of it's all kind of blending together but maybe right here in this breakdown 
right about here, he he's sort of leaning that head one way and pushing it forward, sort of rotating forward a little bit more with his head than he would with his chest, and then pushing back up into this end pose. And so it just needs a little bit more breakdowns for details there. Um, I, I would I would um, consider on this shot. Like why um, why not push in just a touch closer? Because it seems like most of what you're needing from him, you can get out of this, right? Um, and this stuff here is really just like it's not that it's bad. It's just reading is empty, um, and so rather than having to fill up this room with stuff, just get in there a little closer to the interesting stuff. Um, and think just a little bit more about how this door interacts with him. Like it's sort of right up against his arm. So maybe even pushing your camera around this way a little bit um, might uh, help help fix that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like what's going on with the crayon. Um, I think that you could uh, drag the tip a little bit. like make it feel like there's a little bit more friction on the tip there. Um, and of course, like when she stops it there, still needs to have a little bit of motion, but that tip is the contact point with the paper, so it needs to feel like it's staying put even if her hand rotates the crayon over this way. Um, I don't know how you have it rigged, so that may be hard, but ho hopefully not. Um, you can always use some, some locators to kind of track that point if you need to. And... Yeah, of course, this, this needs some lead and follow on this head turn. In fact, the head needs to lead a lot of his actions through here because he's, um, he's asking a question and asking for a favor. And so sometimes when we do that, we kind of push our, our face forward as like a, it's almost like an offering. Like we're, I don't know. Um, yeah, and then again, this one, like that's mainly head motion. You just need a little bit more shifting in the torso. So. Yeah, this is looking really good. It's a big piece. Like, it's a big project. So I'm really I'm excited to see how this comes out. I think it's going to be um, a really, like, a cute piece when it's all done with. Like, you got so much neat little stuff happening in here. And it's like, I love that. So, um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. So keep, keep hammering at it. Oh, also, I think you're, you're getting to that point, too, where you're finishing one shot at a time. I would encourage you to render it. Like, just start rendering whenever whenever you feel like this shot's about done. Just go ahead and render it out. That way you can start getting all these pieces together. The portfolio is coming faster than you might think. And so having that ready to go is beneficial. So, go ahead. So, back to where we were. Project 3. Final. Oh uh, uh, yeah. So I remember um, just right off the bat, one of the one of my notes is I think I would really trim this in in terms of framing, um, just just because there's nothing of importance out here. The only thing that really happens is when that box hits the the ground, right? Um, and I mean, if you really wanted that to happen, you could also just almost make it fall just to here instead. Um, but e either way, I, I think that what we're losing in uh, closeness to this shot um, isn't worth um, what we gain from having the box fall. You may even be able to trim just a little bit off the top and, oh, that's not what I wanted to do, and down the side too, and that'll save you a little bit of the walk-in work as well. Um, so working on that, um, I really like a couple of things in here. I'm going to talk about those first. Um, I like how this, um, as she's walking in, she she obviously sees the box, but her body's still kind of moving forward, even though her head and her chest are turning toward the box. It's almost like she, um, uh, it's just, it's hard to stop that momentum of you moving forward, even you know we don't usually. Um, abruptly stop and turn like we, we will just sort of gradually push ourselves over to it I think that that's reading really well there um, some of your feet placement stuff is a little harsh like right here um, I think I would roll up on the heel that would keep you from getting that IK pop in the knee you still want to you know bend just a little bit and that way you're getting kind of kind of this shape 
I think that that's going to feel a little bit more realistic because right now it's like that feels like it's really going to stretch. In fact, that's how you stretch your calves. Um, so yeah, she just needs to be able to push up on that toe. Watch out, it kind of feels like the foot may be moving just a little bit. Um, she makes contact right there, uh, but then it takes a long time for that foot to go flat. I'll get that foot going flat in like three frames at the most, maybe two. Um, so she has this like, she pauses, and I like what's happening with her upper body. I feel like her foot's doing like a twitchy, right? It's like, I think you're going for overshoot, but it feels a little too perfect and a little too um, frame by frame poppy. Um, so like maybe don't freeze it quite so much, have it kind of ease to a stop and then settle back just a little bit before she goes on. Um, I see where you're going for it, just feeling a little too abrupt. And I like this, and I also like that it's hidden, because I have a feeling that knee's swimming all over the place under there, but we don't really see that, and it, you, you get the effect out of it without having to worry about the technical part. I also like that it comes with this little contact on the table, and that that contact with the table seems offset from the feet, so that's cool. Um, she um, slowly starts to pick this up. That's working well. I would start leaning her over just a little bit as she does this. Right? So just little bits at a time as she's raising that, lean her head, like start easing into that. Because right now what happens is she raises it all the way up and then her head pops over. I would sort of, I would push her even further than that. Like I would push her like way down like this. Um, and start easing into that earlier. And that way, by the time she gets to this point, sees whatever scary thing is in it, um, this part feels a little more natural. Now, frame by framing it, I see some stuff that looks kind of weird. Like right here, like she obviously pushes it right there, but I think like what we're not seeing is a full arm extension, and we need to like, see her really push that away. Um, and I think that will help. And then I love this runoff. I love this pose right here. Um, it feels like it kind of slows down a little bit right there. And it's possibly like, it almost feels like that foot's sticking to the ground. It's like you're waiting until this one is on the ground before you lift that one. That's true with a walk, but this is kind of like a jump. So it's almost like this pose right here needs to be up in the air. Right? Um, and I like this pose here. Like that's looking good. Um, maybe drag the hands just a little bit more um, in this direction and like back this direction but otherwise I really like that um, I think we talked about how to fix the eye um, the eye piece I think I actually talked about it in uh, one of the previous videos too so uh, check those out but if you need some help with fixing that I think this could pull together into a really nice piece so yeah good great job Okay, scaredy cat, you named it. Um, Parker. Come out. Yeah, I think, so, I mean, other than the little camera things and the, the, the foot thing uh, where it's kind of floating, uh, and, of course, I know you're wanting to melt the ice cream a little bit. This one came out pretty good. A um, couple of little things I, I would note. Um, is to make sure that, like, this, well, make sure nothing ever completely flattens out. So it almost feels like, he, he's got a lot of chest motion, and then it stops right there, and then it feels like that upper chest control and the hip control is just complete. So it feels like, you know, you got this curve, you got this curve, and then it hits here, and it's just, like, completely flat, right, um, on the chest and the hips. And what you really need to do there is just kind of go past it a little bit and then kind of you know, just kind of keep it swaying just a, a little bit just to keep it alive, right? Um and like you just kind of feel it like hit a wall when he stops one of the things that's beneficial with that is like right here where he pulls his arm up like you can kind of dip this shoulder down as is his anticipation and that way when it goes up you can sort of pop up into this up point right 
and then almost settle back down like from an overshoot like you, you go up past it and then back down again um, I feel like these two little arm raises here which are at least the second one from like from really it rotates up right there but then from there it feels like it sort of stays so I think take it up higher come back down and I'm also I'm mainly talking about this piece here you know bring it back down so it's really in this direction here um, and then as it goes back up like the you know this still just stays the same again bring that back up and back down so just kind of a little bit more with um, rotating in this thing to show a reaction to that quick arm motion right now that's feeling kind of static um, I think it'll, it'll loosen a lot of stuff up there for you um, I like what's going on with the ice cream cone. I think you could maybe even still pull it back just a little bit more. Maybe like to something like this. Right, that way when it's falling off, it makes sense still yet. Um, like I think you got, you got some room for error there to, to sort of play around with, but that's just shifting a curve. Um, I think how you come back to the ice cream like that one's a hard one because I really don't know what's in the character's head. Like, is he still thinking? Is he still thinking about Jimmy, or is he still thinking about, um, or is he starting to shift his attention to the ice cream? Right. Um, so, like, whatever that is, like, uh, there, there's like some prep involved in that. Right. And I think that you're having this arm react. And instead, I would have this arm sort of set up in anticipation for it, right? So if he's going back for yet another lick, like he's going to go straight into licking the ice cream, like start to prep this hand as if it's going to bring the ice cream up to his face, right? Like maybe it, it starts to pull it out here, um, get it ready to bring it in, and then as soon as it brings it in, it's like, wait, it's empty. Like it gets it to right here, um, or maybe even like tries to lick it and then like it bumps into his, his face or something. I, I, something in there to um, to show that. This hand thing, I know we, we kind of some some people kind of mentioned that like to make that. I, I think I would I would take that out or I would blend into it in this motion. Right. I, I'm not reading it as surprise because it's the only thing that is moving, and I think his head would sort of you know, do like a little pop, a little double take, um, if that was him, you know, being surprised. I, I think that what you're really going for, or what I, what I think reads better, is he's expecting ice cream, and when he gets here, um, his little brain is churning, right? He's like, he's like, you know, little brain in here being like, where's my ice cream? And, like, it just sort of froze up his entire body as, no, I want to draw a brain. Um, as it sort of froze up his entire body while he's, like, thinking about ice cream. Um, and, like, he can have, like, this hand posed to me read as back to eating ice cream, not, what? Like, um, like it's almost more like it's stopped mid, it's like you stopped mid breakdown, right? And he just froze because he's like, where's my ice cream? Um, and his, you know, just sort of a back and forth now between what he sees, what's going on in his brain, what he sees, what's going on in his brain. Um, and then that really helps for when um, he's like he's like putting two and two together, and then he looks down. When we see the ice cream, we see it next to his feet. I would maybe scoot it in just a touch. That was terrible. Come on, Greg. I would maybe scoot it in just a touch more. Um, just keep it a little bit more in, in the frame. Um, scoot that down just a touch more too. Um, I mean, I know you know that already. I'm sort of picking. Now notice that, see what's happening in your shadow back here? Um, play around with that. Like you, you're wanting your character to seem alive. I think what you're actually seeing is the shadow of him putting his hand down. And so that's why I think maybe this shot that you're you're getting here i would just put that later in your timeline so you can do whatever you want to with the shadow um this part here i really like what's going on with his chest and the springiness to it i feel like the hands 
like this one here, like that cone's overlapping action is almost too much. And it's not feeling like a reaction. Like it is on that first part, but then it needs to sort of shoot back up just a little bit here, right? Um, and just feel like it goes limp. Right now it feels like it kind of, like it kind of flips it up, but that's a little on the late side. So I think I would have it like go overshoot right there, and then it needs to flip up right about there. Right? And now it's like three or four frames late. So it's almost like the overshoot's a little, or the overlapping action's just a little too much, and now it's getting, it just feels like it kind of wiggles there at the end. Right? Um, I think the, um, like it should feel like it, it dies down, right? Like the, the swing motion should feel like it kind of does like, this right um and right now i don't know that it's doing that like um the the whole arm right like the the tip of it should just kind of settle to a stop right now it feels like some of them are a little bigger and usually you can just tell that because that's a rotation on your curve right and that curve will just get a little and little until it kind of flattens out um and so i think just going into your curve and sort of settling that down making sure the overlapping action all kind of works i think the body and the head is working pretty good um it's just that now um all right yeah it's looking good man this is this is gonna be a really nice shot um just a, a few tweaks i think you're really close to being done on this one so great job next sean Okay, so I know there's the sort of the obvious note of the the foot um, being off the ground, so um, I won't I won't harp on that one too much. Um, I think right now the biggest thing is like like I said earlier in class, this feels like it's kind of still in blocking, right? You got he's he's over here, um, now he's over here, and it doesn't feel like there was a lot of thought on how he got from point A to point B, right? Um, cause like what he's going to have to do really is, um, let's do it stick figure mode right now. Here's his weight. Both feet are supporting that weight. Here's his upper chest. Here's his head. Right. Um, and then over here, you know, he's got chest head, right. And then both legs supporting that weight. Um, it's right here in the middle that it doesn't make sense because it's still straight up and down but now both legs aren't supporting that weight right now it's just one leg supporting so that means we need to shift him over this way right so we just sort of do that like this right so by shifting him over this way it's going to drag his chest a little bit so maybe it's not caught up with him yet and so maybe it's more like this right? and that puts his weight over here it's also going to cause him to raise his hips up just a little bit right um just so we can get this this foot off the ground right and so now this pose really needs to look a little bit more like that just in your breakdown and it feels like we're, we're just kind of getting whatever maya made happen in that breakdown so um the same here with this little bitty foot shift like his hips don't do anything at all that means they're between um they're it's like they're pinned down by the weight of him you know, pointing in that direction so he has to he has to shift his weight over this way just to be able to shuffle that foot so it, it feels like there's just not enough keyframes at least on the hips to be defining all of these little motions you have here right um, it also feels like some stuff is sort of animating by it's just like certain channels animating by themselves so for example this feels like his chest and his head rotating down but his hands his hips um and and even i don't know i know that really seems to be doing anything um and this feels like one hand raising up by itself well for that hand to raise up he has to maybe rotate this shoulder up just a little bit by doing that it will maybe turn his head a little bit more toward us right just to raise his hand up and put it on his hip Right, and also just doing that is a subtle shift in balance, so we'll probably see his hips shift over really slightly in that direction. Right, so it's it's a whole lot of little stuff, um, and 
frankly, it just doesn't feel like there's um, like you've put enough time into it. It, feel, it feels like this is sort of the the you know first you know five hours worth of work, and the to be finished, this thing needs thirty. You know, like so. I think it, it's it's really just dumping more hours of work into this. So um, my yeah, so again, sort of the weight shifts um, to get this working. Um, the hips are going to kind of travel and uh, translate and rotate in all three axes, right? So you're going to shift the weight over, but you're also going to, that's also going to go up a little bit because he's pushing up on that one leg. So the arc of your hips often look a lot like this. Right? Like they're, they're doing these little, like, swoopy um, figure eights everywhere. So. Um, I think I would start with well, I would start with putting some extra breakdowns in here to to define those those transitions, and then when you polish, I would I would get those hips to to do those figure eights. So, um, and then just the body is kind of reacting to that. All right, cool. So the next one we are Rick. All right. Um, I am going to look, is this the, okay, so you've, you've put this into this folder. Okay, cool. Just wanted to see what you had here. Um, so let's, yeah. Uh, no. I saw you working on this the other day. I thought you had a new version of it. So let me see if you put that into the revisions. Did not, did you put it in? Project four, you did not. That's what we worked on there. So um, maybe this is the this this will work. Let's let's watch it in here. I may just be able to comment on them. See, so yeah, I think these are looking good. Idols looking good. Um, just the notes I made before. It runs looking good. Um, goes to the wall. Jumps looking good, so the landing's looking a little soft, and I would I would consider. Let me see if I can pause it on the jump. Making his feet not quite so symmetrical in height, like raise one of them up a little bit, maybe get him some more angles in there. Um, I thought I saw some stuff further along here with a crouch. Let's see how your sword attack looks. Yeah. Um, I think I already gave you a few notes on the sword attack, um, making it a little more, um, uh, a little bit more weighty. Um, I think in terms of the run, it's looking good. Um, maybe I just notice like while he's running, it does kind of feel like his toes are pointing perfectly straight forward. So um, overall, I think this is looking pretty good though. Let's see what you got on this advanced. Set. Okay, this is where we saw these. Yeah. So, um, I think you got some some versions of this. This feels a little too straight on to me. I would consider turning those feet sideways. It's really hard to crouch and walk forward. So, um, are you getting, you know, make sure you're getting reference for these. Yeah, on the attacks here, it's more of these feet slides that I'm seeing that I was uh, concerned with. So, let's go here. Yeah, like how the weight comes back on this foot feels a little light. And... The little bit of a foot slide. So yeah, right here in this, like his toes are pointed straight forward. As we crouch down, our knees and our toes will kind of point outward a little bit. And so he may be kind of sidestepping instead. So I know you probably have adjusted your run side or your uh, irregular walk cycle to get something like this. Um, just sort of play around with that from reference. Like how would you, you know, how would you do that? It just feels a little too... Um, like regular walk scaled down. I think something else going on there is he may be going up just a little bit too much. Like um, I would maybe do a little bit more side to side hip shift and a little less up and down. So I think this is looking pretty good. Something in his shoulder here feels a little lumpy, like maybe lowering that shoulder just a little bit, like he's pulling it back a little bit more, like ready to attack. And yeah, the walk, it's looking okay. And I thought you had another attack. 
I think you did. So yeah, they're right here back to back, weren't they? Yeah, that one's just like the feet sliding on that. And so, yeah, I think you're, um, I love this run. Like, again, I think the toes are maybe pointing a little too straightforward, but I, I like what you got going on here. I think there's some cool stuff in that. So, yeah, nice work, man. Um, I know you, you've been working on a revision on that, so um, I'll, I'll kind of put a, a temporary grade in there. Let me know when you get the revision in. I'll check it out. So, um, so Tyler, let's pull this one over here. Yeah, I think my the biggest thing with this one, like this one still feels like kind of blocking plus. It doesn't feel like there's much going on in the curves yet. Um, and I think some stuff is moving without really having a reason to why it's moving. Like that little hop it does right there. Like I don't, I'm not really sure why. Right? Like it does a like a hop from right there to over to here, right? And I don't know why it needs to be a hop. So I think I would just you know keep one foot on the ground at all times, um, unless you're wanting it to feel like a hop. Um, and if it does need to feel like a hop, it needs more anticipation down to push up from that. So like I w that's one of the things that kind of strikes me. But it also just feels like the it feels like you really haven't gotten to the the splining pass on this. Um, th this feels really like um, I, I think you 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 struggled a lot in the blocking pass. Of figuring out what your keyframes are, and I think um, I just this is a a note that it just kind of occurs to me. I, I think that there's a chance that when you're blocking, you're still worrying too much about all the little details of how a character gets from point A to point B. Um, I think you you can think about those things, but you don't need to define those in yet because like watching your blocking pass. Let's go back and look at this. Watching your blocking pass, um, you like it feels like you have too many keyframes in there, right? And they're not on everything. Well, actually, that's not maybe it's blocking plus that we saw it in more. No. So yeah, I'm watching your blocking pass. It just, it just feels like there's there's too many keyframes in it, and like things are rotating. Um, you're thinking about every step, um, and like you know, you see, you see like three poses for leaning over. Um, and I think that that's that's too early to be worrying about all of that. I was like, how do you get him from over here to here to off screen? Like those are your first three poses. Like what are those? And then figuring out the in betweens is not a straight ahead process it's like how do you get from here to halfway to there does he do that as a jump or does he do it as two quick steps right and then how does he get from halfway there on to the banana does he just sort of you know sort of settle is like a whole bunch of little steps there or is it another big jump and he lands there and so it's really it's breaking it down and figuring out those those that little stuff in between and i have a feeling you're worrying about that just a little too early like you're already getting all the steps in there and what ends up happening is it, it um, in the process of worrying about that tedium, you lose some of the control of making it seem appealing. Right? Like you, yeah, it's all maybe accurate, but now you have to worry about all of those keyframes you made for steps. So I think really just like um, breaking down your process, making sure you're thinking entirely like about the pose and everything going on in the anatomy, and getting fewer poses um, that clearly define that and then breaking those down like but not straight ahead like you know sort of go halfway in between and say how do I get from here to here um, eventually you will get to that point where you're figuring out all those little steps but I have a feeling like you're you're trying to figure that stuff out before um, before getting those poses in so um, I think this one and that's one of the reasons I feel like this one kind of um, sort of had a hiccup in the middle of it where you you were you were fighting with it um it's definitely getting better it's not it's not your strongest piece so i think working on that to get um to, to pull this up is definitely um worthwhile it's definitely worth putting that effort into it but you have two weeks left before you graduate so you have to kind of budget your um your work time like hey you know do you put the work into that or do you put the work into polishing something else 
and that's really a, a personal decision for you. But eventually, I think I would go back and sort of look at this and say, how can I simplify some stuff and then start breaking that down more to get um, your final answer on this. I think it's a really neat looking rig. It works really well in this environment. So yeah, I think it's worth finishing, um, just sort of budgeting your time and figuring out when. So, cool. I think that's everybody. Yep, that's everybody for this project. Um, all right, cool. I will upload this video very soon. I, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.